All right, so I finally got a hold of um, these keyboards from these 2016, 2017, 2018 um, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, MacBook, whatever. I don't know what all models have these. But anyways, um, all the models that have these butterfly keys, they're very similar to remove. So I'm going to be showing um, how, or I'm going to attempt to show how to remove each key. Uh, if anything, I'm going to pull each one out just go so I can see underneath and then I can kind of figure out how they're put together and then yeah all right so we're gonna go over how to remove all the keys on here okay so most likely what you're gonna need is a small needle um, it doesn't have to be bent like the one I have but just a needle all right and then you'll need a little thin tool I use my fingernails um, but you can use like a thin tool, something like this. Okay, so let me see if I can show each one. It's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of get a good close-up view of each key, but I'll do the best I can. All right, so I already have, this is probably one of my most popular videos, is removing these, these keys here. Okay, so basically what you do to remove these keys, I trimmed my nail so it's a little bit more difficult now. But basically what you want to do is you want to get underneath... <clears throat> the top here okay and you want to start from the top you don't want to try and start from the bottom okay so you get underneath there and this works way better when I have fingernails right now my fingernails are pretty short okay people keep telling me to cut them and like I don't really cut them until like I start typing and it gets uncomfortable um, but then I cut them too short but anyway so what you want to do get underneath the top here okay try and lift this up okay and then once you get underneath, you can kind of use your fingernail, grow out your fingernails, it'll help, trust me. Um, if you don't like having long fingernails, just leave one long, you can cut all the rest, at least until you fix your keyboard. Alright, so once you pop the two corners here, let me show you what it looks like underneath here. So let me kind of zoom in. Okay, so the key, the way these work, um, I don't know if I can get a clear view. Oh yeah, you can see it. So underneath the keys, you got these little... Um, clamps here so they're kind of shaped like claws like this and what they do is they attach they wrap around these little posts here these pegs and that's how they hold down the bottom pieces <clears throat> let's see if I can show this um, they're more like a um, square edge kind of thing so they just kind of like slide over in place so when you put these keys into place you actually want to put the bottom first like this and you kind of slide it in and then you just push it back down all right, and there you go, the key is latched. So if you need a whole set of keys, you can try and find like a replacement broken keyboard like this, um, but usually that's kind of hard, so you can find like websites that sell these keys. All right, again, what you do, you get underneath the top. If you can, because this tool is kind of shaped weird, it's better if it's like curved over like this. So what you do is you get underneath, okay? If you can with your fingernail, you get underneath, okay? All right. Again, it's tough because I cut my nails, but you get underneath. Once you get under there, just slide your finger over to the side, and there you go. It unclips the other side. Again, pulled this out. And just to show like how how well this works, that it doesn't break it, I'm going to do it a third time, all right? So we're going to put this back in. It clips in, okay? It doesn't fall out or anything. I'm going to go ahead, go underneath again, go under that corner, slide it over pop that one wiggle it out and there we go all right same thing this key no damage all right no damage to either one okay all right so now we're going to put this back down and then clip that in place all right so all these letter keys are exactly the same now let's go ahead and see um i don't know if all of these are the same i believe they are um just as a test i'm going to go with this key because most likely this will be different if anything um, if, if this is the same then all the number keys will be the same okay so you just get underneath the top again again because I cut my fingernails this is more difficult but get under there slide it over okay you should hear the click if it didn't click you might have to um, pull a little harder but let's see this key might be different because it's not popping off and I did lift it up all the way as much as I did the other key so let's take a look. I don't know if I'll be able to see inside here. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. So it did come up. I just had to pull a bit harder. Okay, just like that. There we go. And yes, this key does look exactly the same. Okay, so we got that. So it looks like all these keys, all these square shaped ones are exactly the same. I'm going to go with the number one as well, just to make sure. If this is the same, then all of those should be the same. Okay. Again, um, if you want, you can try and use a thin tool like this. You don't want to insert the tool too far, just barely along the top edge. Okay. And the reason you do that is because you don't want to get underneath um, the butterfly clip. You just want to get underneath the plastic key itself. All right. So there we go. Removed another one successfully. These plastic clips are fine. I don't know. I've never tried ripping out these plastic clip the hinges so I'm not sure if these break out how you would put those back hopefully you guys haven't broken those hinges but um maybe I should try ripping one out since this is a junk keyboard anyways so this one you can see like how the mechanism works underneath they just flip up like this I actually pulled this one way too far I think and it broke yeah, I'm not seeing how it attaches to the keyboard. Sorry, I'm going off the screen. I'm trying to see how this attaches to the keyboard, but I'm not seeing it. So let's see if I can pull this up higher somehow. I'm going to try with this prying tool. Okay, so that thing, something just snapped off on there. So, okay, I see how. Okay, so if you look at this. There's actually a little nub there. They're supposed to be on all, like, two here and then two here. But as you can see, only one is left. So it looks like this. You would have to kind of slide it to the side. Okay. But these are, I don't know, they're, they're really difficult to remove. Let's do the other shift key just to show you. So the shift key, it's basically the same. There's actually four of those clips across the top, like one here and then two in the middle and then one over here. So these are a lot more difficult to remove. Um, I do have to use kind of a needle to help it along. So let me see if I can show this. Okay, so same thing. I'm gonna use the tool to kind of help lift it up. There's a very good chance if you're trying to pry yours out that you might end up breaking something so you want to be careful okay let me see if i can show this all right so if i kind of lift this up as you can see it's uh or i don't know if you can even see it's pulling that whole hinge mechanism up so the trick is what you do you get a needle and you insert it halfway in between i don't know if i can show this it's really hard to get the right angle but you get the needle halfway in between okay so let's see if i can do that so pull that Get the needle halfway in between once you get the needle halfway in between you slide the needle up towards the top and then you can pop the clip out so there you can see now oops there you go now that hinge is moved and then what you want to do is while you have the needle in there okay you push down against the keyboard to push the clips away from the shift key okay so while you're pulling the shift key you push the white part down and there we go okay so like that same thing as the other keys okay here you can see on it there's the four clamps um claws on top that grip into this but again if you pull this too hard then you will end up breaking these little um parts that hold it so essentially what we're doing when we when we pull this the key up the hinge opens or closes like this and then what we're doing is we're getting the ne the needle into here and then we're sliding the needle up and as you slide the needle up it pulls the key forward and pushes this down and what we're doing is we're pushing this hinge mechanism back down as we pull the key away and that separates the claws so basically the thing is like this and what we're doing is using the needle to push this down and then our finger to pull this the key away okay so that's how you remove that we're gonna put this again and I'm gonna do this one more time just to show you so here you can see it's good this keyboard is all screwed up so I don't care if it gets damaged all right so I'm gonna show again 
Same thing, if you have a needle, you can actually do the whole thing with a small enough needle. So use the needle to help pull up the key. Once you get the key up, insert the needle halfway point, okay? Okay, you might have to kind of pull it up, but not too hard. Oh, we got lucky, it already popped itself out. So get the needle in there, okay? In between the hinge, and then you use that to push the hinge down while you're pulling the key up with your finger. Go along, keep pushing that hinge down as you pull up on the shift key. And there we go. Pop that out. Okay, and there we go. Um, I'm going to see if I can somehow remove this butterfly key um, hinge. I've never tried doing that. But I would assume that you can kind of push the hinge over to the side. Wow, that's really tough. Okay, so... Yeah, I don't know how you would do that. It's If you try, you'd probably end up breaking it. So I'm just going to leave it. Anyways, we'll put the shift key back. Snap that back in, and there we go. That one's good. All right, so what other keys? Let's, um, let's try the return key. I'm going to assume it's the same thing. Okay, we'll just use the same idea. Lift up the top, take the needle, try and get it under the center, okay? Once you get underneath the center, that's uh, in between the two um, hinge mechanisms. Then you can slide it up while pushing down. Okay, and then going over the top just like this. And there we go. We got the return key out. Same thing. This one also has four clips at the top. All right, we'll put this back down. Clip those back in place and we're good to go. We're going to check the delete key. I'm assuming it's going to be the same. All right, I'm going to use the needle to start it. That way I only need one tool, all right? Get the needle. What you can do is you can take the needle and then from the top, slide it down towards the center. But again, you wanna be careful because you don't want the needle to be already like scraping underneath the hinge. You want it to go on top of the hinge, okay? So if you have it like this and you're pulling up the key, essentially what's happening, this is lifting up. So you don't want the needle to go under here, you want the needle to go on top. So that way when you slide it over, it separates the key and the hinge, okay? If you get underneath, then what's going to happen is you're going to rip the hinge out of the keyboard and then you're going to not be able to repair it, okay? So it's better if you can get the needle underneath the center like this. And then just go ahead, work your way over. Just slightly pushing it down as you pull up on the key. And there we go, delete key. This one only has three clips on the top, okay? All right, we'll put that back in, bottom side again first, clip that in, and we're good. Actually, this one, okay, there we go. All right, so we got that, that one's good. We did the shift key. Let's see, let's check the command key and the option key. Um, these ones are kind of stiff, so let's go, actually, I'll do that just because some people might have issues with their keyboards being stiff like that. Maybe we can see if we can fix it. All right, command key, same thing, get the thing under the center. And then go along the cross. There we go. This one only has two clips. All right. Put that back in. And this is just to prove that I'm not breaking any clips. Okay. The one I did like four or five times, I could see like one of the clips was kind of getting bad. But uh, if you're only doing it like once, you'll be fine. All right. So option key, same thing. It helps to kind of start the needle in the middle like this and then use that to help you lift it up if you can. If not, then just start from the back here. Get the needle in the center. And when I pull the center while doing that, it actually pops that clip. So you go that way, just like that. I'm guessing this is the same as the regular letter keys, and it is. Just two clips, all right? So hopefully this video will help. This one is like stuck. I think uh, whoever had this keyboard, they spilled something on it. And then what happens, I think they tried to dry it. That's why it's all bubbly like this. And once you melt it like that, then you're going to be, yeah, I don't know. But uh, this one, definitely this hinge mechanism, whatever they did to it, it's completely destroyed. Let's pop this out again. Sometimes you can see what's wrong with it. Sometimes it's like dirt or dust. This one is, it's still wiggling a little bit. So let me try brushing it and see. Sometimes you can brush this and then use like an air blower. Okay. And if this piece is completely fine, which it looks like it, 
then it might work if we just stick it back on. Let's try it. Okay. No, I think it's broken. Yeah, I don't know what's broken in there. It's probably like that butterfly key mechanism. All right, so now we're going to remove the arrow keys. Same thing, get underneath. All right, insert the tool, insert the needle at the center. Use that to pop it, just like that. Same thing, only the two clips, all right. Bottom again, pop, click it, that key's perfectly fine. We'll try this, the right arrow key, just to see if it's different, but usually it'll probably be the same. Okay, same thing, lift that, insert the needle in the center, go around, there we go. Very easy, two clips. All right, now the ones that make me nervous, these small keys here. Um, I'm not sure how these work, but we're gonna try, okay? So let's pop this up. If anything, once I pop them out, um, even if I break them, at least I'll know how the clips work. So if I need to replace them in the future, hopefully I'll be able to do that, all right? So let's get underneath here. Maybe it's the same. Let's try inserting the needle in the middle. Okay, and I don't think it is because I don't feel anything popping out. So, okay, I think what's happening is the clips are actually towards the side. Is that right? Let's see here. Um, yes, so for the up arrow, the clips are actually on this side. Okay, so let's put this back and then let's see if we could easily pop this out. Okay, so the hinge mechanism actually goes up this way instead of like the other ones, they all go like this. Okay, so basically what you want to do, now this is the center. Okay, what did I just do with the needle? Oh, there we go. Okay, so because of that, what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to lift from this side, okay? And I think these are the same. This one is probably just flipped, so the clips are probably on this side for the down arrow, but we'll open it to confirm. All right, so we'll lift this up, okay? This key's a bit more difficult, okay? So you lift from this side, and it popped itself, but if, you, if it didn't, you would stick the needle in this side and then go over that way. And there we go, we got that key out. All right, let's put it back in, just to prove that we didn't break anything. There you go, that key's stuck in place, it's not falling out, okay? So we're gonna do the same thing with the down arrow key. If you want, you can probably go from this side too, but I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna try again from here. It's weird now because I'm prying from this side, so let's try and get the needle under there, okay? I got the needle under there, I popped it, and it already came out. So as you can see, it came out really easy. I flipped it over sideways, so the clips are here, but when I rotate it back over, yep. So the up and down arrow keys are the same, it's just they flipped it. So instead, you start with this side, and then clip that in. So this key's good, you can see it's not falling out, okay? So the arrow keys, it looks like to pull them out, just get the the needle under there and the clips are strong enough that if you pry it it just pops out it looks like so hopefully actually that might have broken it <laughs> so yep so let me see if I can show you here so I don't know if you can tell let's see but now the clips here are kind of broken you can see how in the light one of them's like bright it's because the light it um, shines in and then it reflects on the crack so what you can do, you can try pushing these two pieces together, and sometimes that will help enough. But if it doesn't work, then you're going to have to buy a replacement of this key. Okay? So we'll try and put that back. And it holds well enough. I mean, not perfect. Like, if you try and rip it out, it'll probably break. But again, the best way, if you can, is get the needle in the center. Okay? And then work your way over to the side, and there we go. Okay, so that one came out easily. And then again, the clip, it flips. So on this side, it's over here. On the up arrow, it's over here. Okay, so I think we're almost done. Let's go with the caps lock key now and the tab key. Those are the only two left on this uh, touch bar model. Okay, um, the fingerprint sensor, if you guys are wondering, you can't actually replace this. If you replace it, Touch ID won't work. Um, the power button will work, but Touch ID won't work if I remember correctly. And that requires complete disassembly because the button is actually here and it's held underneath the entire motherboard logic board. So that's not one that you can just pop out. 
and it's connected to the main board. All right, so let's go with the caps lock now. I'm guessing it's the same idea. Let's go at the top corner here. And I'm going to insert the needle towards the center, okay? And then I'm going to work my way up to the top. Oh, I think I didn't go underneath. So let's make sure we go uh, in between the hinge. There we go. And then push the hinge down again while you're working your way over. And there we go. Caps lock key comes out. Here you can see there are three clips. I don't know why it's off-centered, but there's three of them. You can see the clips are off-centered. That's how they designed it. I guess, oh, I see, because the little light, they didn't want to put a clip there. I don't know, it's kind of strange. Oh, I guess because they couldn't extend this all the way. All right, so there we go. That one's good. It's not coming back out. All right, tab key, same thing. Get underneath the top corner. Get the needle in the center here. Okay, just like this. All right. And I'm going to leave all of this footage uncut so you can kind of see. All right, there we go. Get it in the center. Work your way. Usually once you get the needle in the center, it already pops the top left clip. And then you just work your way over just like every other key. And there we go. Three clips just like the other. And again, put the bottom in. Clip that in place. We're good. All right, so we finished this keyboard. All right, so we finished this one. This is the Touch Bar Mac. We're gonna toss that aside. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do this one. I don't. I think this is a MacBook Air or just a MacBook. I don't know. Um, but uh, all of these are pretty much the same. They are actually interchangeable with the larger MacBook Pros. Let me grab this. So if you look at it. All these keys are actually the same exact thing. They're interchangeable. Um, the space bar, it's very scary, very tricky. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that out cleanly. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Other than that, all these keys are interchangeable with the Pro, I believe. So let's go ahead and get this Z key out just to confirm one. All right. The rest I'm going to just ignore because they're pretty much the same. All right. So underneath the center... Yep, so if this is the same, I'm pretty sure the rest are the same, okay? And just to make sure they're the same, what I'm going to do, I remove that Z key there. Let's remove the Z key here. Okay. All right, let's get the Z key out of here. Okay, so you got this Z key, you see? We're going to take the Z key from the other one, put that bottom piece in, and clip it in. There you go completely interchangeable all right z key from here completely interchangeable okay all right so we'll set that aside i'm pretty sure all the rest caps lock tab all those are interchangeable so since i already showed all the rest we're going to do the keyboard and then we're going to go ahead and do these upper row of keys all right and just to confirm the arrow keys let's do the same thing going from the center okay all right we're going to lift up the center of the arrow keys and then work our way over to the side here. There we go. Come on. There we go. And yes, it's exactly the same. So just like that, same thing. Put that side in. Clip that down. Then this arrow key, I'm pretty sure they're flipped over and the clips are on this side. So same thing. Get under the middle and then work your way over that way. All right. Space bar time. So I'm going to assume the space bar, all the clips are at the top just like the rest. So I'm going to lift up the top corner. Let me zoom in. Okay. Just like the rest, once I get in, I'm going to get the my needle and try and work my way to the center. Once I get in the center, hopefully that's between the hinges. We're going to slide it up. Hopefully I'm not going to break it because if I do, I don't have another chance to show this. So we're going to go over here. Okay. And let's try and work the needle up. Okay up over to the top and there we go and while we're pushing the needle down we're pulling the keyboard key up the spacebar key up and hopefully we aren't actually lifting the hinge let me confirm yes so the hinge is staying down there okay so we're going to keep going across all right i'm going to have to do this again all right so keep going across just like this Make sure that we are going underneath that hinge. Okay. 
keep going across. It can be a little tricky. You don't want to get the needle caught on those little hinge clips. Okay. So hopefully we're getting this out because this is the first time I'm ever, I've ever tried cleanly removing the space bar key. There we go. So we got all those clips out. Let's see if the keyboard key will just walk out. Okay, so you kind of have to wiggle it around. And there we go, we got this out. Um, this one is very different actually. So this has white clips underneath and here you can see the little clamps are here. So there's only four, but it clamps on with this, okay? So you can see there's two on each side. I don't know if it's clear enough. There you go. All right, now the moment of truth. Let's see if it goes back in place. Bottom side first, and then clip that, and it works. All right, so this keyboard was, I think this space bar was already, I don't know why this keyboard is a lot more stiff. It doesn't travel as far, but there you go. Four clips under there, and we got it removed. All right, so now we got the last keys up here. So I'm going to assume the power button key and then all these function keys are going to be the same. The escape key is much longer, so I'm not sure. I'm going to actually start with the function key just because there's so many. So if I break one, then I got more chances. All right. So I'm going to assume we start with the center. Okay. Just like this. If it's anything like the arrow keys, then I'm starting with the center here. Okay, and then let's slide it over and see if we can figure out where is the clip. Okay, is it towards the right? Let me zoom out. Okay, let's go towards the right. And no, that clip doesn't want to come out. Wait, actually, let's zoom in. Let me zoom in here. Let me take a closer look. Okay, from closer inspection, it looks like the clips are to the left, but let's confirm. I'm going to try and pop this out. I accidentally popped the hinge mechanism up. Okay, so let's slide the tool over to the left. There we go. And let's take a look. And yes, the hinges are to the left, okay? So I accidentally broke this, I think. Yep. Uh, let's see. This one actually, it looks like it can be put back in place. So this had a bad spill. I can see like liquid damage in there. Um, but what you can do is you pull on this, it looks like, and then you can hopefully get it to go back into the slot, but it seems to be really tough. So I don't know if you break these, oh, there we go. I think that's in, I don't know. Okay, it looks like it's in. So we'll put this back in. Again, you start with the right hand side. Okay, I think I, I broke <laughs> the hinge mechanism underneath. Oh, there we go. Okay, right hand side, and then clip that, and there we go. So just to confirm, we're gonna pull out the F2 key as well. Okay, start with the center. All right, just like that. Try and keep it lifted up a little bit, get the needle in there, okay, and slide it over to the left. Okay, sliding over to the left, there we go. And yep, clips are on the left side, all right? And that one's fine. Again, put back the side on the right, clip that in place, and we're good to go. Let's confirm with the power button now. I'm gonna assume it's the same thing. The liquid damage on this makes it more difficult, but uh, let's go ahead, lift up the center, slide our way over to the left. There we go. And yes, the power key is exactly the same. So same thing, put that back in, clip that in, and there we go. All right, I hope I'm not breaking. This power key was already kind of bad, so let's see, the F12 I can actually click. So let's do that and see if I can make sure that I'm not damaging anything. Okay, left key over, just like that. Okay, looks good. Put this back in and I don't know. I don't know. It gets it gets a little weird after after popping this out. So you do want to be careful with these. These keys seem to be more sensitive. Let's try the F11 key. So these keys, I don't know. I don't know if there's a safe way to remove these because it looks like once you pop them out, they start having issues. I think because it twists the key a little bit. But um, let's try it again. Okay, make sure that's in. No, actually, that's good. 
All right, so no issues. You just want to be careful with it. All right, last key, the escape key here. I'm going to assume it's similar. So let's go ahead and pry the middle. All right, get the middle up and let's slide the tool over to the left. Hopefully it's on the left. We only got one go at this. Escape key, it's going up. That's, well, this one's kind of stuck, wiggle it. It does look the same. And yes, it is on the left. So there we go. Put that in and we're good to go. So that's how you remove every single key on these kinds of keyboards. So hopefully this video helped you guys. Uh, hopefully this one will actually be more popular because my other one where I did just a few keys, that one got over 100,000 views, I'm surprised. This one I removed all the keys. So come on, let's get to a million guys. All right. If this video helped you guys, please like, subscribe, share with other people, everyone that you know that has these kinds of MacBooks with these keyboards. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Again, like, subscribe, help my channel grow, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.